Over the past few weeks, we have witnessed the absolute implosion of the entire Terra Luna ecosystem. People lost money, many people said the project had died, and then out of the shadows came the possibility of a hard fork to breathe new life into the project and make good on some of those losses that people experienced. But what even is a hard fork? Why do they happen? And what does it mean for you? That's the subject of today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the Part-Time Economist and if you're seeing this video, you've probably heard something about the Terra Luna hard fork, an attempt to revitalize the project, make good on some of those losses that people experienced and just kind of get things back on track. And although I would love to speculate on what's going to happen with that, I can't really talk too much about it, but what I can do is explain what a hard fork is, why they happen, what some of the results of hard forks are, and we'll also take a look at several notable historical cryptocurrency hard forks. So with that being said, what is a fork? A fork is a change to the protocol. Now, a protocol is simply the set of rules that governs a blockchain or a cryptocurrency. If you remember in last week's video, we talked about the block size of the Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash blockchains. That would be one example of the protocol, right? The block size is going to be a certain amount. Of course, there's other protocol rules such as um, proof of work, proof of stake, consensus mechanisms, block time, a lot of different things, but you get the idea. We're simply doing a software update. We're changing how it works. So I don't actually like this image of a fork. Rather, I think a fork in the road is a better um, analogy because it shows a divergence, a change in the project. Now, within this, there's really two kinds of forks. The first is a soft fork, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on soft forks in this video because they're not really um, contentious. There's something that kind of happens. For many people, they might not even know about them. It's more of a software upgrade, right? It's an update. It's not something, it's generally uh, backwards compatible, so it's not something that a lot of people really pay attention to unless you're super involved with a cryptocurrency project. What we're talking about in this video is the spectacular shock and awe hard forks, right? These are the forks that everyone's talking about that have massive, massive changes to a cryptocurrency project. They can result in a new cryptocurrency being born altogether. So we know what a fork is, but why do they happen? A fork happens when there is some need for an update. Some kind of dramatic change needs to take place. So if you look at this example, we've got our blockchain. It's going along, people are making the blocks, everything is just fine. But something happens where there's a fundamental disagreement. Now, this isn't something that gets resolved. It's something where two sides say, no, we can't go back to the way things were. So one chain will continue one direction, one will continue another direction. And there's a couple things I want you to notice here. The first is that although this one chain has split into two different chains, they have a shared history. So this last block here, let's call it block 1000, all of these transactions are still going to be recognized on this blockchain and all of these transactions are obviously going to be recognized on this blockchain as well. Which leads us to the first interesting point about hard forks. When there is a hard fork, let's call this chain part-time economist one, if there's a hard fork, you not only keep the cryptocurrency that was on part-time economist one, but because this is a shared history, you generally also get the same amount of coins on part-time economist too, or maybe not the same amount of coins, but you do get some kind of value from having them on the old chain. Because remember, they have that shared history. So you actually get more cryptocurrency as a result of the hard fork. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. Uh, we'll come to that later, but just keep in mind, you generally get um, that airdrop as well. And I think the best way of explaining this is with a couple examples. The first example is Ethereum versus Ethereum Classic. So for this, we've got to go back to 2016. There was an organization known as the DAO. Basically, to make the story shorter, they were hacked and there was two groups of people. The first group said, hey, they were hacked. 
it's not cool it's not fun but you know what it happened we can't change the blockchain because if you remember the entire point of a blockchain is an immutable public ledger so once something is put on the blockchain it's not supposed to be reversed right it's there it's supposed to be um, basically forever so these people said hey it's terrible that this hack happened but it's more important to preserve um, this this protocol this idea of not changing things than it is to go back and undo that and then another group said hey this was a massive massive hack here if you look at it it says that five percent of the total ethereum in circulation at the time was stolen so this is a massive massive hack imagine if five percent of the national currency of the u.s got stolen or five percent of all the gold in the world right so it's a massive thing and they said you know what it is more important for us to go back this is like an exception we're going to go back and we're going to change this and this led to a disagreement there's no way that both of these can be right so the chain ended up splitting the people that said code is law we're not going back to change it that became ethereum classic and then ethereum as we know it today is the one that went back and reversed that hack so what i'm trying to get you to understand is that number one these forks specifically these hard forks are generally uh, very much contested there's a fundamental disagreement it's not something minor update it's a fundamental disagreement about which way the blockchain should go um, so that's kind of what happened with Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. And what I will also show you is that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash had something similar, though not perhaps um, as dramatic. So with Bitcoin, we all know Bitcoin can be slow, it can be a little bit expensive. And there was the idea that we need to make the block size bigger. We need to bitcoin again it's supposed to be a peer-to-peer -peer form of digital cash and how can it be digital cash if people are spending five to ten dollars just to send a couple cents on the network that is not how it should be so some people said hey we're going to increase the block size we're going to make these transactions quicker faster cheaper and then other people said no we're not going to do that we like things the way they are it's more secure this is the original protocol and it's more important to not change that protocol than it is to make some minor improvements so what happened well bitcoin continued as it was doing and the chain that wanted to increase the block size became bitcoin cash so the cool thing about that and the cool thing about hard forks in general is that both chains continue to exist so what usually happens is if you had coins on one chain so if you had bitcoin and then it splits into bitcoin cash you've automatically got bitcoin cash in your wallet now right because remember they have that shared history now a couple things here number one it is important to notice that i am not a tax advisor a financial advisor but in general airdrops are taxable so yes you do get those free coins but they are taxable on top of that it's important to note that this fork it divides the community right so if we think that bitcoin and bitcoin cash all of these people were united they were all on team bitcoin and then some of them broke off to bitcoin cash some of them and then later even bitcoin cash broke off into bitcoin sv bitcoin satoshi vision right so each fork reduces kind of the consensus the unanimity um, that people have supporting a project it loses a little bit of interest it loses a little bit of steam so as you can see here this is a price chart of bitcoin cash i do believe it doesn't have the label on there but i'm pretty sure that's what it is it reached a really high price and then it kind of fizzled out right so whenever a split happens a couple things can occur number one people just entirely reject the new chain the majority of people just prefer the old chain or what we can see is that they both uh, remain popular there's a lot of different outcomes that can happen generally what i've seen is the chain that retains the name tends to do a little bit better so if we think of bitcoin um, versus bitcoin cash obviously you can see since the split bitcoin has a considerably higher price if we look at ethereum versus ethereum classic obviously um, ethereum as we just call ethereum has the higher price today that's obviously not financial advice but in general um, the chain that kind of branches off if it has the, the the minority of people supporting it doesn't seem to do as well as the one with more support which is really common sense but 
something to keep in mind as well. So just to summarize, a fork is a change in the code and it can happen for a number of reasons. It can be a, a major update such as Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash or it can be the result of some contended uh, decision, right? So whatever the cause, the fork is basically a split in the code in which there's two separate chains. They both continue to exist, but they have a shared history, which means you will generally get an airdrop of the new coins as well. However, it does divide the community. It can lead to less support. It can lead to infighting, and it kind of fractures that group that was united in their purpose. So I hope that explained a little bit more about how forks work, what the implications are, and I hope you enjoyed examining some of the historic, notable hard forks. Of course, time will tell what happens with Terra, everything with that, and it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.